1973 World Series matched the defending champions Oakland Athletics against the New York Mets. The A's won in seven games for their second of three consecutive World Series titles. The Mets won the National League East Division by one and a half games over the St. Louis Cardinals, then defeated the Cincinnati Reds, three games to two, in the National League Championship Series. The Athletics won the American League West Division by six games over the Kansas City Royals, then defeated the Baltimore Orioles, three games to two, in the American League Championship Series. This was the first World Series in which all weekday games started at night. The three weekday games the previous year were scheduled to be played at night, but a postponement of Game 3 eliminated the scheduled off day between Games 5 and 6, and Major League Baseball moved Game 5 on Friday to an afternoon start to allow the teams more travel time for the day game on Saturday. This was the last World Series in which each team produced and sold its own game programs for its home games. Starting in 1974, Major League Baseball printed an official World Series program that was sold in both stadiums. This was the third consecutive World Series, all seven games, in which the winning team scored fewer runs overall. The trend continued for the next seven-game series in 1975. Topic. Background. Topic: New York Mets. The 1973 Mets .509 season winning percentage is the lowest posted by any pennant winner in Major League history. Injuries plagued the team throughout the season. The team got off to a promising 4-0 start and went .600 for the month of April. Before long, however, the team was soon beset with injuries and fell in standing, just as with their previous season. Stumbling through the summer in last place, the Mets got healthy and hot in September, ultimately winning the division with a mere 82 victories, marking the only time between 1970 and 1980 that neither their rival Philadelphia Phillies, nor the Pittsburgh Pirates, won the division. The final standings at 82-79, the 1973 New York Mets had the worst record of any team ever to play in a World Series. They had only the ninth best record in the 2014 Major Leagues, behind the Oakland A's, the Cincinnati Reds who they beat in the National League Championship Series, the Baltimore Orioles who were defeated by Oakland in the American League Championship Series, the Los Angeles Dodgers, the San Francisco Giants, the Boston Red Sox, the Detroit Tigers and the Kansas City Royals none of whom made the postseason. The 1973 New York Mets had the lowest winning percentage now the second lowest of any postseason team the San Diego Padres finished 82–80 in 2005. 1969 holdovers Bud Harrelson, Jerry Grote, Wayne Garrett, Tom Seaver, Jerry Kuzman, and Tug McGraw joined forces with the Mets Farm System alumni John Milner and John Matlack and trade acquired Rusty Stobe, Felix Millorn, and Willie Mays, now 42 years old. Don Hahn and Mays alternated in center field, although they both batted right-handed. The Mets NLCS opponents, an imposing Cincinnati Reds squad that posted 99 victories during the regular season, were the favorite to return to the series for a second consecutive year. The Reds had fallen to the A's in the previous year's series. The 1973 NLCS went the full five games, and featured a now-famous brawl between Pete Rose and Mets shortstop Bud Harrelson. In the end, the Mets continued their improbable rise and bumped Rose and the rest of the Mighty Reds from the playoffs. Willie Mays recorded the final hit of his career in Game 2. In four World Series 1951, 1954, 1962, and 1973, Mays did not hit a single home run. He hit only one in the postseason, during the 1971 NLCS. Mays also fell in the outfield. He commented, growing old is just a helpless hurt. Topic. Oakland A's The Oakland A's secured the pennant by overcoming the Baltimore Orioles in the 1973 ALCS. 
The A's, defending champions, still possessed a formidable lineup headed by a healthy Reggie Jackson, .293, 32 HR, 117 RBI, 22 stolen bases, who would be named league MVP in 1973. Jackson was joined in the lineup by standouts like third baseman Sal Bando, the fine defensive outfielder Joe Rudy, the speedy shortstop Bert Campanaris, and the A's catcher, 1972 World Series hero Gene Tennis. The pitching staff featured three 20 game winners Ken Holtzman, 21 to 13, Catfish Hunter, 21 to 5, and Vida Blue, 20 to 9, with Rolly Fingers, 22 saves, 1.92, serving as the A's ace relief pitcher. The A's offered entertainment both on and off the field in 1973. Their brightly colored uniforms were the perfect metaphor for a team notable for clashing personalities. The stars engaged regularly in conflicts with each other and with owner Charles O. Finley. With the designated hitter rule in effect for the first time in 1973, American League pitchers did not bat during the regular season. They were, however, expected to take their turn at the plate during each game of this series. So it was that a man who had played no offensive role during the regular season came to make a key batting contribution for the A's during the series. With some extra batting practice, A's pitcher Ken Holtzman would stroke a double that helped the A's to win Game 1 and another double that helped them secure the deciding seventh game. This series was also notable for an incident where Finley attempted to fire. Second baseman Mike Andrews for his errors in Game 2 see below. Commissioner Bowie Kuhn would reinstate Andrews and fine Finley. Despite the hostility of the Oakland players toward the team's owner, the A's would be the first to repeat as world champions since the 1961-62 New York Yankees. Oakland manager Dick Williams resigned after the series was over, having had enough of owner Charles O. Finley's interference. Oakland reliever Darryl Knowles became the first ever pitcher to appear in every game of a seven-game World Series. Topic Summary: Al Oakland A's four versus NI New York Mets three. Topic Matchups. Topic Game One. The Mets and A's opened the series in Oakland with John Matlack and Ken Holtzman as the Game One starters. Matlack, with a 14-16 record during the 1973 season, is one of only four pitchers in history to start Game One of a World Series after a regular season losing record. Willie Mays started in place of the injured Rusty Stobe and batted third in what turned out to be his final big league start. In the third, pitcher Holtzman doubled and scored when Bert Campanaris hit a routine grounder that inexplicably bounced between Mets second baseman's Felix Millorn's legs. Campanaris then stole second and scored on a single to right by Joe Rudy. The Mets came up with a run in the fourth on an RBI single by John Milner that scored Cleon Jones. Holtzman, Rolly Fingers, and Darryl Knowles then shut the door on the Mets' offense. Knowles earned the save. Topic. Game 2 Game 2, eventually won by the Mets 10-7 in 12 innings, set a new record for the longest game in series history at 4 hours and 13 minutes. Along with blinding sunshine, turn -ing every fly ball into adventure. Especially for a 42-year-old Willie Mays, Kurt Gowdy described the contest in the official MLB 1973 Fall Classic highlight film as one of the longest and weirdest games in World Series history. Vida Blue opposed Jerry Kuzman on the mound, but neither pitched well. In the first inning, the A's jumped on Kuzman for two runs as the flyball adventures began. With one out, Joe Rudy reached second on a fly ball to left that Cleon Jones lost in the sun as he drifted to the warning track and the ball dropped in front of him. Rudy scored when the next batter, Sal Bando, hit a ball to right center that Don Hahn misplayed and allowed to bounce to the wall as Bando reached third. After Gene Tennis walked with two outs, Bando scored on a Jesus Alou double. 
The A's scored again in the second on Joe Rudy's single scoring the ubiquitous Burt Campanaris, who had tripled. The Mets got home runs from Cleon Jones and Wayne Garrett in the second and third innings, respectively. The A's were still up 3-2 going into the sixth when things got even more strange. With one out and two on, Horatio Pina relieved Blue and promptly hit Jerry Grote with his first pitch, loading the bases. Don Hahn then drove home Cleon Jones with an infield hit and Bud Harrelson followed with an RBI single to put the Mets ahead 4-3. Jim Beecham then pinch hit for reliever Harry Parker and hit a comebacker to the mound. Darrell Knowles, who had relieved Pina, fielded the ball but lost his balance hurrying the throw home and threw wildly past Ray Foss on the attempted force play. Two more Mets runs scored for a 6-3 lead. Reggie Jackson had an RBI double in the seventh to make it 6-4. In the ninth, Darren Johnson, batting for Blue Moon Odom, lifted a fly ball to center that Willie Mays lost in the sun and fell down while chasing. Johnson reached second. Alan Lewis Pinch ran and scored on a single by Jackson after Sal Bando walked. Gene Tennis singled in Bando to tie it. The Mets threatened in the tenth when Harrelson led off with a single. Tug McGraw bunted for a sacrifice and Rolly Fingers threw to second, but Harrelson ran with the pitch and was safe. McGraw was retired on the relay to first. Harrelson went to third when Garrett bounced a high grounder to tennis at first and reached when tennis's throw pulled fingers off the bag. Harrelson then tagged and attempted to score on a Felix Millorn fly to left. Harrelson appeared to have sidestepped Foss's tag at the plate, and replays from NBC's broadcast clearly showed Foss missed him, but he was called out by umpire Augie Donatelli, prompting a heated outburst from Harrelson, on deck batter Willie Mays, and manager Yogi Berra. The game stayed knotted at 6-6 until the top of the 12th. Harrelson led off with a double and went to third when McGraw reached first on a bunt that Sal Bando overran. With two outs, Mays drove in Harrelson with a single that would turn out to be the final hit and RBI of his storied career. It gave the Mets a 7-6 lead. After Jones walked to load the bases, John Milner grounded to second baseman Mike Andrews, but the ball went through his legs. McGraw and Mays scored to make the lead 9-6. The next batter, Grote, hit another grounder to Andrews, but his throw to first pulled tennis off the bag, though NBC replays show tennis kept his foot on the bag. Jones scored to make it 10-6. The A's added a run in the bottom of the inning when Jackson reached third as Mays lost yet another fly ball in the sun and Alou singled him home, but Andrews' errors proved too much to overcome. McGraw, who pitched six innings total, earned the win, and George Stone the save and the Mets evened the series. A's owner Charlie Finley was furious at Andrews' 12th inning miscues, he proceeded to punish Andrews and further alienate A's manager Dick Williams by placing the infielder on the disabled list, citing a fake injury that would have sidelined Andrews for the rest of the series. Commissioner of Baseball Bowie Kuhn stepped in, reactivated Andrews, and disciplined Finley. Game 3 Game 3 matched up Tom Seaver and Catfish Hunter. Hunter had trouble early on when Wayne Garrett homered to right and Felix Millorn scored on a wild pitch, but then found his rhythm. Seaver kept the A's off the board until the sixth, when Sal Bando and Gene Tennis broke through with consecutive doubles that delivered a run and cut the Met lead to 2-1. Joe Rudy came up with another clutch hit in the eighth when he singled in Bert Campanaris to tie the game. In the tenth, Willie Mays would make his final appearance in an MLB game, unsuccessfully pinch hitting for Tug McGraw. Campanaris delivered the game winning RBI in the eleventh when he singled off Harry Parker to score Ted Kubiak. Rolly Fingers got the save. Topic. Game four. The tide seemed to turn in the Mets' favor beginning in Game 4. A's starter Ken Holtzman couldn't make it out of the first inning after Rusty Stobe smashed a three-run homer to left center. Blue Moon Odom relieved and gave up a two-run single to Stobe in a three-run Mets fourth. John Matlack got the win by pitching eight innings of three-hit ball. Ray Sadetsky pitched the ninth and got the save. 
Mike Andrews entered the game as a pinch hitter in the eighth, prompting a standing ovation from the Mets' home crowd, in a display of defiance toward A's owner Charlie Finley. Andrews grounded out in what would be his last ever major league at bat. Game 5 Game 5 was a rematch up of Vida Blue and Jerry Kuzman. This time, both pitchers threw well. John Milner had an RBI single in the second, and Don Hahn's triple to center field scored Jerry Grote with the second Mets run in the sixth. Kuzman pitched well and got the win, with a save from Tug McGraw. Game 6 The A's won, thanks to the clutch pitching of Catfish Hunter, who outdueled Tom Seaver, and the timely hitting of Reggie Jackson. Jackson doubled and drove in Joe Rudy in the first inning and doubled in Sal Bando in the third to give Oakland a 2-0 lead. In the eighth inning, the Mets threatened, knocking Hunter out of the game after Ken Boswell singled in a run. Reliever Darrell Knowles put out the fire by striking out the sore-shouldered Rusty Stobe on three pitches with two men on base. In the bottom half of the inning, the A's added an insurance run when Jackson singled, advanced to third on center fielder Don Hahn's error, and scored on Jesus Alou's sacrifice fly. Rolly Fingers got the save in the ninth inning to force a seventh game. Topic: <laughs> Game Seven. Ken Holt's man outdueled John Matlack in a rematch of the Game 4 starters. The third inning proved to be the difference, as Holt's man lined a one-out double off Matlack to left, his second of the series after not batting at all during the season. Matlack then surrendered a two-run opposite field homer to Burt Campanaris, Oakland's first home run of the series, and then another two-run blast to Reggie Jackson later in the inning, giving the A's a 4-0 lead and Holt's man all the runs he needed. The Mets came back with two runs after Oakland increased their lead to 5-0 in the fifth inning, but it was not enough. Campanaris snagged a Wayne Garrett pop fly to end the series, and Jackson was named the World Series MVP. In the third inning, Gene Tennis walked for the 11th time tying the series record set by Babe Ruth of the Yankees in 1926. In the seventh inning, Wayne Garrett struck out for the 11th time tying the series record set by Eddie Matthews of the Milwaukee Braves in 1958 later broken in 1980 when Willie Wilson of the Royals struck out 12 times. Darrell Knowles got the save and became the only pitcher ever to appear in all seven games of a seven-game World Series until Brandon Morrow in the 2017 World Series. Vern Hoshite, a coach with the A's in 1973, would win a World Series with the Mets as a coach in 1986. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Composite line score. 1973 World Series 4 to 3 Oakland A's AL over New York Mets NL Topic Notes Topic See also 1973 Japan Series <laughs>